All right, in this video, we're going to analyze an example of another MMI question that deals with medical ethics. Unlike secondary essays, there's really no way to predict which schools will ask you which questions in your interview. So the best way to prepare is to get familiar with the criteria your interviewers will be looking for and then practice responding to lots and lots of examples of commonly asked questions. If you need an overview on the format of MMI interviews and how to prepare for all the different types of questions you'll encounter, you can check out our in-depth MMI video at the link on the screen. Or if you're looking for more practice material, our medical school interview question bank contains hundreds of the most common traditional and MMI questions, plus a sample response for each. You can even find a sample response to the question we'll be discussing in this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the question. It reads, you are a physician who has just finished your long day at work and is finally able to go home at an appropriate time for the first time in weeks. You're on your way to meet your family for dinner when you suddenly receive a phone call from Mrs. Johnson, an 87-year-old patient in a nursing home who has been a patient of yours for 20 years. She's in need of medical attention but refuses to see another doctor. How would you approach the situation? Okay, so this one is interesting because even though it's maybe not as urgent or complicated as some ethical questions, it's still a realistic scenario and it requires a great deal of sensitivity. What you want to do first with any ethics question is ask yourself two brainstorming questions. What is the primary problem and what is this question actually testing? In answer to that first question, you could summarize the problem as your longtime patient, an elderly nursing home resident in need of medical attention is demanding to be treated by you, even though you've just clocked out after several weeks of working overtime. And the answer to the second question would be something like this question is testing how well you can balance personal and professional responsibilities while also prioritizing the well-being of your patient and how well you can communicate with your patient about this sensitive situation in order to maintain the trust you've built with them over 20 years. One thing to remember here is that the MMI doesn't test your knowledge of diagnostic criteria or specific legal guidelines, so you don't need to try to solve these problems in your response. So on interview day, answering these two key questions should be your very first objective during the two minute period that they give you to reflect on the prompt. And then as you start actually organizing your thoughts in preparation to give your response, you should do a quick review of the qualities that your interviewers will be on the lookout for. So those are respect for patient autonomy, uh, beneficence, meaning working in the best interest of your patients, non-maleficence, meaning do no harm, respect for human rights, bedside manner, and thoughtfulness and reflectiveness. Keeping those criteria in mind, let's start thinking about how to approach this. As the doctor in this scenario, you need to decide whether or not you're going to fulfill Mrs. Johnson's request to be treated by you. And perhaps just as importantly, you need to determine how you're going to explain your decision to her. If this is a non-acting scenario, you'll likely need to ask your interviewers some clarification clarifying follow-up questions during your response time, like questions about the severity and time sensitivity of her condition, about whether the other available doctors are well-equipped to handle her case, and about her reasoning for refusing treatment from other doctors. But if this question is presented to you as an acting scenario, this is where your bedside manner skills will really be on full display. So interviewers will want you to be respectful about the way you discuss this issue with Mrs. Johnson. You'll need to be sensitive to her needs and concerns and then help set her mind at ease about the possibility of being treated by another doctor. You should also ask her why she doesn't want to be treated by anyone else and let her response inform the solutions you offer. Whatever you do, Listen carefully to her response and avoid sounding patronizing or overly authoritative. If Mrs. Johnson doesn't trust other doctors because of some kind of past traumatic experience, you might offer to connect her with counseling services in her nursing home. But if she just prefers you over other doctors because you know her case better than anyone else, then you might reassure her by letting her know that the other doctors can contact you directly with any questions about her treatment. You might also schedule a check-in with her at your earliest availability. You can also be straightforward with her about the reasons why you can't treat her at this time. For example, if you're sleep deprived from all the recent overworking, you can't be sure that you'll be able to provide the quality of care she deserves. But if she doesn't agree with your rationale, that's okay too. In the real world, sometimes even the best doctors can't convince their patients to get on the same page with them. Regardless, you'll still need to make a final decision. If Mrs. Johnson is absolutely frantic and panicking, you might want to weigh the cost benefit of clocking back in to go check in on her. 
Are you well rested enough to care for her? If the answer is no, then ethically you shouldn't put yourself in a position where you're at risk of negligent care. If the answer is yes, do you think her concerns or her condition warrant you sacrificing your time to rest and recharge before your next shift? Doctors often have to sacrifice comfort and convenience in order to care for their patients. And if you choose to take that route here, then you might also consider how you would gently break the news to your family who's expecting to have you home for dinner uh, for the first time in weeks. So these are the kinds of conclusions you'll need to draw based on your own judgment with the key principles of medical ethics in mind. There may not necessarily be a right or wrong answer, but interviewers will want to know how you arrived at your solution. So whatever you decide, be sure to explain your reasoning as clearly and compassionately as possible. Okay, so that sets you up well to formulate your own response to this common MMI ethics question as well as other MMI ethics questions. And if you're looking for a full-length sample response to this question, along with hundreds more sample interview questions with full responses for each, be sure to check out our medical school interview question bank at the link here. Take care.